Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Music Den. I'm your host, Armando Venditti, and I hope you guys are having a great day. Here in Edmonton, it is overcast and storming. Uh, we do need the rain, but you know what? It means I'm stuck inside, so I can't get out for a bit. So um, I hope wherever you guys are, you're safe, you're dry, you're looking after yourselves and one another, and you're having a fantastic day, whatever it is you're doing. In this episode of The Music Den, I'm going to be doing an album ranking, and I am going to be ranking the albums of Boston rock band Extreme. Now, Extreme, hailing from uh, Boston, Massachusetts, uh, formed in 1985. Lead singer Gary Sharon and drummer Paul Geary were in a group called The Dream. The story goes that Gary Sharon crossed paths with guitarist Nuno Betancourt, who was in another group at the time. And um, basically, Gary hounded him to join his band once he saw that Nuno could shred on guitar. Nuno Betancourt, for those of you who happen to don't know, uh, is considered to be one of the top guitarist in modern rock music and uh, he has the the accolades and the praise of such guitar greats as Brian May uh, Dweezil Zappa so I mean he I, I, as much as he's touted I also would believe that he is somewhat underrated and overlooked as a guitarist, because I do think that he has a, an incredible ability of attack and melody. Um, I called it I call it unbridled restraint because he can go nuts uh, doing a guitar solo, but he can also rein it in and keep it under control when he has to. So that's just my very humble opinion on Nuno Betancourt's guitar ability. Uh, the band formed in 1985. They quickly gained a local following. They were scattered up by Capitol, by Sony, and also by a and They ended up going with a and Records. They signed a deal um, in 87. They released their debut album in 1989, self-titled. And the rest they say is history. Um, uh, the self-titled al album, sorry, was a modest success. It wasn't anywhere as, as you know, as they would hit in terms of chart success. It reached number 80 in the Billboard charts. But this was back in the day when record labels and management gave you a chance to hone your craft and develop a sound. Uh, Extreme were always a band that melded musical styles together from ballads to acoustic to funk to hard rock. And they did so, and they do so beautifully, I should say. Um, <clears throat> they followed up the debut album with Pornography, Extreme 2 Pornography in 1990. And it featured the hits, uh, Get the Funk Out, Decadent Dance, Wholehearted and the number one smash, More Than Words, which, um, according to a &M Records, was not going to be released as a single because the, the so-called music experts at a &M didn't think it would be a hit because, <clears throat> you know, someone else was able to tell you what you liked as, an, as, a, <clears throat> as a music fan, right? So, but at the urging of Nuno Betancourt, they released it as, as a single in test markets, and then it went global. They followed that up with uh, Three Sides to Every Story three years later, or two years later, in September of 92, which was an adventurous album, very bold album featuring um, three different musical styles. You had the hard rock section, they grouped all the songs together. The hard rock section, 
the more poppy, more introspective songs in part two. And in part three, there were three extended pieces called uh, Everything Under the Sun. And they were sectioned off into Rise and Shine, uh, Am I Ever Gonna Change, and uh, Who Cares? So three years lapsed in between that release and Waiting for the Punchline. Um, Paul Geary at this point leaves the band. Mike Mangini from Dream Theater joins in on drums. Fortunately, he only played on three tracks on Waiting for the Punchline. The band did a tour. Then Nuno Betancourt basically broke up the band. He was going solo. Released a solo album, Schizophonic, in 1997. Has gone on to release three more solo albums. The band kept busy. Gary Sharon joined Van Halen for three for three years. Left after um, released one album with Van Halen that did not do well. Pat Badger um, also did solo work. They reunited again in o in o seven and released um, their fifth album, Soldades de Rock, which is Portuguese for Nostalgic Yearnings of Rock. In 08, another 15 years passed between that album and their current release, Six, which was released on June 9th of this year. So now you're up to date. What I'm going to do, oh yes, in the interim between Soldades de Rock and Six, Nuno Betancourt also toured and played with Rihanna, among other artists. Also played with uh, Steven Tyler on certain at certain shows that Tyler did. So, but I digress. What I'm going to do is attempt to rank the six albums of this band and um, give you a bit of background as to why I ranked them the way I did. And just because something, an album is at number six, does not mean it is not <clears throat> a good album. Excuse me. Um, it's just when you do these rankings, and I kind of prefer bands that have a smaller catalog because they're easier to rank. When you have a group like Queen that have 15 albums or like, you know, name any other band that has out, like an extensive catalog, it is extremely difficult, no pun intended, to, to rank an album, say, from like 15 or... 17 to 1. It is really difficult. But I'm going to do my best with Extreme on the 6. So, coming in at number 6 for me is the debut album. Again, released in 1989. And it was produced by Reinhold Mack and the band. Featuring uh, the singles Kid Ego and Mother, I Don't Want to Go to School Today. It, it's a good album. Um, it doesn't... It, how can I put this? And I don't mean this in a bad way. But the album does not stand out from any of the uh, albums of that like glam rock period that were released from like you know, Skid Row or anything of that nature. I mean, for example, I mean, having said that, though, I should say, Ben Court's guitar playing and Gary Sharon's vocal prowess and their ability their ability to harmonize together with Pat Badger. It, it please. I mean, I, the, you know, if they, if literally, if they were singing in your living room and they did harmonies in front of you, your chandelier would fall. Like seriously, they're that good. Um, it's just the 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 songs on the album really don't stand out from again from and the production really doesn't stand out from anything that had come out uh from any other band at that point. You know, and very few debut albums go down in history as as the quintessential album from an artist 
there are those that are the exception to the rule. Um, but, you know, and it's got to be said, um, Extreme were or are big fans of Queen. So to be able to work with Reinhold Mack, who had produced, you know, the game, Hot Space, um, the works, a kind of magic on some tracks, um, must have been fantastic for them. So that's number <clears throat> six. Coming in at number five is the release from 08, Sadadis the Rock. Now, there was a 13-year gap between this release and Waiting for the Punchline. Um, this album was released on Fontana Music and Frontiers in Records in, the, in Europe. It's a long album. It's like 63 minutes. It is very good. It's very guitar-driven. That's one thing about Extreme. I mean, Extreme, you know, people say, oh, Extreme on more than words, you know, Power ballad, da 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 da. No, they are a hard rock band with funk influences, but they can kick anyone's ass and on in any venue, on any stage. That they they know what the hell they're doing. They can they can pack houses and and perform like no one's business. Um, so not just the rock is a good album. I didn't listen to it when it first came out in 08. I, I didn't even know that it existed. I have since been listening to it. There are songs on here. I mean, it, again, it does cover different musical genres. Uh, hard rock mixed with funk. It's all over the place. Uh, songs like Star, which was the lead single, um, is great, you know, it's got almost like a shuffle kind of a, a drum pattern to it. Um, and it's basically saying, you know, be careful what you wish for because you're not gonna, you know, you'll get it, but it may not be what, what you think it is. Other songs on there are uh, of note are Run, which again is just great. I mean, their ability to harmonize and come up with catchy melodies and catchy guitar hooks is like unsurpassed. They're unsurpassed. Other songs are um, Ballad Ghost, which, I mean, beautiful piano work from Nuno Betancourt on this. Um, you know, the song talks about um, not being able to possibly not being able to make amends with your past and things that have happened in your past and with people that you may have fallen out with and um, and you know the regret that you may have when that happens and you know what I think that happens to everybody I mean it's true it's there's no you know was, nobody is immune to that everyone has had that kind of a situation occur um and you know the 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 final track on the album, uh, peace, in bracket in bracket soldades. Um, uh, you know it it is a beautiful album. I don't know why it didn't get uh, a lot of notice when it was released. I think maybe people in the U.S. in North America had sort of passed extreme up for uh being finished. You know. Um, but you know what? This is an album I got to say too. Sadat is a rock is an album where it's like you know yeah if you've ever been in a record shop and you're looking through a bin of CDs and you come across something and a seat an album and you know what the price is right and you want to take a chance and you know and you after listening to it you're happy that you did. This is one of those albums. I swear, I promise you, you really should check it out. It's on Amazon. It's on Discogs. You can even stream it on on YouTube. You'll you'll love it. I swear. Um, and this features uh, drummer um, <clears throat> uh, Kevin Figueroa. So, I mean, 
fantastic drummer. Um, that's number five. Coming in at number four is 95's Waiting for the Punchline. Now, this album, last, re last release for A&M Records, after this album, they would do a tour and then Nuno would break up the band. He has set own interviews and go on do a solo uh, career. And um, again, he released his debut solo album, Schizophonic, in 97. And if you see the cover for this album, you know what I'm talking about. Um, Waiting for the Punchline is a harder rock album than what they've previously done um, with regards to Three Sides to Every Story. It was a three-year gap between doing Three Sides to Every Story and Waiting for the Punchline. Um, Paul Geary features on the majority of the album, and it was after the recording of the album he decided to leave the band to leave the business and focus on artist management at the encouragement of Gary Sharon and the rest of the band. Um, and comes in uh, Mike Mangini on drums. And Mike Mangini plays on three tracks, Hip Today, which was a lead-off single, uh, Leave Me Alone, and No Respect. Now, this album, again, it did not get as much <clears throat> coverage and as much promotion as Three Sides to Every Story. I don't know why. It's a, it's, it's, Hard rock, it's guitar laden. Nuno Betancourt's again ability to come up with fantastic uh crunchy guitar licks and riffs is unsurpassed. Um songs and it songs like There Is No God, Cynical, uh, I mean, you know. I won't say what the what the title of uh, cynical was on the vinyl copy because can't say that word. But other songs like um, Midnight Express, uh, "Leave Me Alone," which basically is saying to whoever, um, "I know what I'm doing. I'm not nuts. I'm not." crazy. I just want you to leave me alone. I want to be left alone with my thoughts, left alone with my life. I don't want to have any contact with you or anybody right now. Just go away. And then that song breaks into the funk, the funk, uh, unmitigated funk of no respect. And it's got to be said, Mike Mangini on these, on these three tracks is a monster on the drums. He is in the pocket so bloody hard and so heavy and so thick that these songs leave a stain on you after they're done. So, I mean, it's unreal. There are other, you know, other songs like Unconditionally, um, things, you know, which are good too. Um, but the ones I mentioned are the ones that really stand out to me. Um and again, it's it's unfortunate that this album did not get um, a lot of um, coverage. Um, I mean, it's said that you know it's it's uh, this album tried to follow the trend of of grunge. Uh, that it was influenced, you know, it was influenced by grunge, etc. Um, I just find it a really heavy hard rock album with with funk undertones, you know. Uh, it, it is a it is a good album. It is. I'm sorry that and it's unfortunately they didn't get a lot of coverage as it as it should have. Um call it lack of promotion by the record company. I have no idea. I really don't know. Um coming in at number three is is pornography. Extreme Two Pornography. Yes, see the title properly. Released in in uh, 1990, produced by Michael Wagner and Nuno Betancourt. Michael Wagner was known at the time to be the producer who had worked with groups like uh, Skid Row, and this this album had a bit of a slow start. Um, they released two singles, uh, Decadent Dance, and um, 
get the funk out, which really did not, you know, did not do well. It was more, it was a moderate, moderate hit, modest hit. And then they released the single More Than Words. And this sucker took off. It was just like unreal. Unbelievable. Um, other songs on the album are um, He Man, Woman Hater, which that guitar intro, you know, just bloody crazy. Just like, you know, the tapping that the you know can do, you know, and, you know, and that he still does. Uh it the the album, oh my God. I mean, it was it was huge. I remember at the time, um, little side note, I I was allowed I was able to go spend a day at AM Records um with the AR guy who, who whose name was Faisal. And <clears throat> We were talking about the album and how big it was, and it. Just, he goes, "Yeah, it's just it. it the, this thing went off the chart, you know. When when more than words came was released as a single and it, it was picked up on radio, this album blew up. And he subsequently sent me a free copy of the of the album and also of um, a three side stereo story." Um, at the time, and it, it, I mean, the album is fantastic. Um, wholehearted, you know, as the last track on the album. Um, Nuno writing it on the bathroom toilet, as he has said, he's done. It's just a good, fantastic acoustic sing along track that you know just caught on. I mean, the harmony of vocals on, on these songs are just amazing, you know, just just. Fantastic. Um, but I mean, the downside of that is, is that Extreme fell into the thing, into the trap of being known for the one song more than words as a, as a one-off hit. And there, there's more to them than that. Like, really, like, unreal. Um, but, you know, I mean, the album overall, the production has the big drum sound, you know, heavy laden guitars, just, Thick with wall to wall guitar guitars, sorry. Um, this is fantastic, you know. Um, so that's number three. Coming in at number two is their um 1992 release, three sides to every story. Released September of 1992. Uh, clocks in at 76 minutes, almost 77 minutes, a mammoth album. Uh, the album was sectioned off into, into three parts, uh, three truths, mine, yours, and the truth. So three sides, my side, your side, and the truth. And what they did was they grouped the songs together. So they grouped all the hard rock or funky tracks together in the first section. All of the, I guess, romantic or introspective tracks in the second section. And in the third section, they really went to town. They utilized an, ent an entire symphony orchestra to do um, a symphonic uh, musical novella, I call it, where there were three sections, Rise and Shine, Am I Ever Gonna Change, and... <clears throat> Um, who cares? Sorry. And these last three tracks are epic in, in length. The uh, <clears throat> Rise and Shine and Am I Ever Gonna Change are six minutes and change each. And who cares? Clocks in eight minutes and change. So they wanted to sort of, with this album, they wanted to continue the hard rock and the funk, but they also wanted to go off and, and do a bit more of a musical dexterity, stretch their limbs and musical muscle, as you want, as you can might want to say. Um, and I mean, the lead off single "Rest in Peace" was a good is a good track. It still is a good track. Um, 
you know, it, 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 it was a radio hit. Um, other songs of note on the album are uh, Cupid's Dead, uh, which is like funk galore, just amazing. Uh, Peacemaker Die, which ends off the first part. Uh, Color Me Blind, Seven Sundays. What I liked about the album is that the first part ended with Peacemaker Die, and then it goes right into the ballads of uh, the ballad of seven Sundays, which you know, lush, you know, orchestration and keyboards and just a you know, lush production style. And this album was produced by Bob St. John and Nuno Betancourt. Other singles from the album were Tragic Comic and Stop the World. Uh, other songs of note on that are Our Father. Um, um, God isn't dead, you know, and it's got to be said for me, the piece de resistance, the, the kick, you know, the, the capper for this album is the triple track third side call, you know, of rise and shine. And am I ever going to change and who cares? Those three together are just amazing. The, I believe the Japanese version had, um, an extra track before the everything under the sun section called don't leave me now, which clocks in at five minutes and 20 seconds, something like that. But when I first heard this album in 92, I was excited beyond belief to get this album and to listen to it and to just soak myself up into it, like just absorb it. From from the word go, from warheads all the way up to uh, who cares. Um, it's you know it sold seven hundred thousand copies. Was this album too ambitious? Possibly. Um, I don't think the musical style, the musical stylings, had changed that much in terms of grunge and stuff. I think that it just, um, I think A&M were looking for another more than words and Extreme were not a band or are not a band that rest on their laurels. They want to keep going forward. So, it, it, you know, it's unfortunate that, 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 that this album only achieved gold status in, uh, in North America. And I got to tell you, I saw Extreme on this tour for the Three Sides to Every Story tour. And I saw them at Massey Hall in Toronto in February of 93. I went with a friend of mine. I saw them on the second night of a two-night stint at Massey Hall. They kicked ass. Saigon Kick opened the, the show. They blew Saigon Kick off the stage. And um, you could tell that they were going somewhere. Um there's a story. I got to tell this story. There was a guy that was in the row in front of in front of us. And he was trying to pick up the girl beside him. And he whispered to the girl, you know, I really don't know that much about extreme. Da, 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 da. Well, at one point, um, Nuno Betancourt broke into um, Midnight Express that was going to be on Waiting for the Punchline. And you hear this guy yell out, no, no rules, no, no rules. And he didn't know Extreme from ACDC, for God's sake. Like, he had no idea what, what he was doing. He never did get the phone number, but there you go, you know? Uh, so, yeah, that's that's my story. Sorry for the divergence. Um, coming in at number one is this album here. As I pick it up. And again, forgive the glare. There we go. Extreme six. Okay. This album came out <clears throat> June 9th of this year. This album has 12 tracks. It is by far the best album that they have released so far in their career. And 
little footnote, they're already thinking of an album title for the next album and coming up with musical ideas for the next album and in terms of where they want to go. Um, the album has four singles, um, starting with Rise. The album starts off with Rise and goes into Hashtag Rebel, Banshee, which Hashtag Rebel and Banshee were a double-A single. And the fourth track and the fourth single is Other Side of the Rainbow. Now, this album continues what Extreme have done in the past and what they're doing and what they continue to do today. And it also breaks new ground. I mean, other songs of note on here are Small Town Beautiful, The Mask, which is more of a bluesy, uh, rip-roaring track, You've got on the mask, you've got um, Nuno Bentoncourt on lead vocals. And you've got Gary Sharon doing doing the the choruses. But according to Nuno Bentoncourt, you've got him doing his best Jim Morrison routine. Other songs of note are Thicker Than Blood, Save Me, Hurricane, which is a fantastic ballad, X Out, which is a commentary on on our social uh, <clears throat> on society sorry <clears throat> forgive me and how we basically tend to turn on one another and sort of cancel each other out which I think we've all been uh, victims of that at one point in our lives I, I know I have more than once won't go into detail um and also, saw, um, other songs, the last two tracks, Beautiful Girls, which is a, a, a beautiful pop, reggae, slash Caribbean-oriented uh, track, which features Nuno Betancourt on, vo on lead vocals, which he does an amazing job on vocals on this on the harmony vocals he he double tracks himself on vocals and it's just it's a it's a fantastic summertime track this album overall you can sit in the car have it in the car with the top down and you can be driving anywhere and just enjoy <clears throat> a beer uh you know a night out with whoever with your friends or with your with your partner your spouse he or she and just enjoy each other's company. And this album will get you through the night. I promise you guys, listen to it. Get it. Stream it. Buy it. Enjoy it. Love it. it I can't say any more. The last track on the album is um, Here's to the Losers. And it just it's not just basically, but it's talking about how, you know, we all have been through situations where we've given our best we've done the best we can do that we think that we've done and you know even though we've basically came up with the short end of the straw or uh, things didn't turn out the way we wanted to give yourself a hand you did the best you could there will be another day hopefully and you will come through it all the better for it and it's got fantastic gang style vocal like Gang style vocals on the chorus. Again, there we go. Sorry for the my fingers, but this is the album. It's on Amazon. Get it. It's about $31. Uh, it will probably be cheaper at your local record store. Get it on Amazon. Get it on Discogs, eBay. Stream it on YouTube. Whatever you can, but get this album. I can't say enough about it. It's released, produced by Nuno Betancourt. It's released on ear music. So like it's it's available. It's not gonna be discontinued after a few months. Believe me, you can still get it. So just to go through the ranking again, number six, self excuse me. Soft tired extreme. Uh number five, Soldades de Rock. Number four, rating for the punchline. Number three, pornography. Number two, three sides to every story. And number one, six. So that's it for the ranking. Hopefully you guys and guys enjoyed this episode. And again, leave your comments down below. 
with regards to do you like extreme? Do you not like extreme? Please put your your order of uh, ranking down below and let me know what you think. And again, hit like and uh, click subscribe and uh, the notification bell to keep yourselves on top of any new content that I've got coming up. I've said before, I'm going to be doing a show of uh, album rankings with Bill Schuster on uh, Chilliwack. We talked about this yesterday. He and I, through, uh, we chatted through email about it. We're going to be doing a Pink Floyd ranking. I've got my uh, list of uh, Pink Floyd albums ranked. Um, Bill is still working on his, and I believe Ryan Gavalier is going to be joining us on that, depending on schedules. And we're going to be doing an album ranking, uh, Bill and I, on uh, which I'm looking forward to, bloody hell, uh, John Jackson and Black Sabbath and Rush at some point. So there's a lot of stuff coming up. Uh, I took a bit of a break last week, but you know what, guys? I'm back. Hopefully you enjoy what I'm doing and you keep watching because uh, I do enjoy this and I I do enjoy the uh, the feedback I'm getting and the, the compliments and the praise. It's nice to hear that it that it, people are enjoying what I'm doing. Um, and please stay tuned for more content. Um, that's it for now. And please look after yourselves and one another. And I'll be back soon with another video. Have a good day.